Are you ready to go on a trip, Diesel? You want to go to America? Look at that tail wag. Hi, America. I, I like America, man. So cool. Diesel, let's go. We're going to Minnesota, man. Minnesota. Some Americans consider that Canada still, but it is technically America, just so you know. <laughs> I, I have some American friends in the States, and when I tell them I'm going down to the States, they, they're like, oh, where are you coming? Where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to Minnesota. I'm like, That's not the States. <laughs> well, it's definitely not part of Canada, so if it's not part of the States, I guess it's its own little thing, but... I like it in Minnesota. Really nice people there. Uh, it's actually a lot of the same heritage and bloodlines or whatever you'd say uh, of my people up here. Uh, we settled all the way up through Minnesota into Manitoba and Canada here. A lot of the same backgrounds and heritage uh, in some parts of Minnesota. Anyways, I can relate to them. They're good people. They make really good food. I like their truck stops too. The truck stops are awesome. It was a pilot vehicle. And there goes a house. I would love to do that one day. That'd be awesome. So if you ordered a house, it's on the way. It's being delivered. Amazon direct shipping. There it goes. Order your house on Amazon. We'll bring it straight to your doorstep. Oh, wait. We'll bring the doorstep to you. And there goes the chase vehicle. We're about to cross into the United States. We're on the Canadian side here. And uh, before we cross, Canadian DOT here wants to see me a little closer. They got the scale open. So as soon as Mr. Tanker gets over the scale here, it'll be our turn. They'll look at all our stickers, make sure they're all up to date. Maybe run my plates. Maybe take a look and stare at me for a little bit. roll down my window so I can hear them yell at me if they do. Next axle is still, I don't got any more axles so I'm taking that as a green light. I guess they're not at their desk right now. I prefer if they are actually paying attention and once my trailer tires are off the scale they give me the green light. Just gives me a little more confidence to leave, you know. But hey, if they don't tell me to stop, if they don't give me the red light, I'm just gonna keep on going. Next stop, America. And here, right on the blue sign to the right, it says, welcome to North Dakota. Legendary. Indeed, legendary. I guess that's their state slogan. I've never really paid attention to what North Dakota state slogan is. I guess that would be it. Legendary. So I, I believe I told you that we were going down to uh, Minnesota in the border of North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, actually, I was actually a little wrong there. We're actually going to be going uh, about halfway down into South Dakota on Interstate 29 here, and then just jumping over into Minnesota on I-90. So we'll go down to I-90 and head just east into the next state. And that's where we deliver this lumber first thing tomorrow morning. And then from there, we'll go over further east into Minnesota, into Owatonna, and load up that glass. I'm told it'll take quite a long time to load, like four to eight hours, or four to six, or four to eight, something like that. We'll tie it down, we'll tarp it, and we'll drag it back on up to Canada. I believe that load is going to BC. I don't think I'll be taking it through, but if they want me to, hey, I'll do it. Sorry, my camera's been very shaky lately. It's, I'm kind of disappointed in this mount. I've got to figure something out because it's got to be very hard on your eyes, especially if you're watching it on a big screen. I apologize for that, and I am trying to fix it. Just grabbing fuel here in Fargo, North Dakota. Fueling ourselves up, got ourselves some coffee, got ourselves some fuel. And I just saw a driver, I was, I was kind of concerned about his load. I, I don't like telling guys how to tie down their load because I'm learning as well, right? Like I said, and I've always said that the load you're pulling is your load. And the way you tie it down is your business. But you remember those farm loads I was pulling last week out of North Dakota here? Uh, I did four of them, right? 
I saw someone in the pumps here and I went to go talk to the guy because I wanted to hear his opinion on it and you know just maybe hear his reasoning for the way he tied it down he didn't use any chains that's heavy farm equipment and there was no chains so I just asked him I'm like oh I guess chains aren't necessary he's like well yeah yeah we're supposed to use chains but I didn't have any T hooks and those are special hooks that you use. I showed you in my vlogs, right, to, to chain down the load. Uh, it, it slips into a little slot. It makes it much easier. But th the only thing the T-hooks are there for is to make the job easier. I didn't have T-hooks either, and I still found ways to chain that load down because I didn't want that load to fall off. Now, on each of my loads, there was four pieces, right? Four pieces of machinery. Uh, and each one had to be chained down, and then I also put straps over it. So I, I strapped it, and I chained it. This guy over each piece of equipment only two straps all the way over the top two straps holding this huge massive heavy piece of equipment down like I said I don't want to get in people's faces or judge them because like I said I'm learning myself but my own personal opinion I would never ever in my life pull that load down the highway with only two straps over the top of it. Like two straps, so two, four, six, eight. So there's eight straps on the load. So technically, according to weights, yeah, he was good. Because the whole load itself is, well, 40,000 pounds. And each strap is good for 5,400 pounds, right? Uh, that's 10,800 pounds. So if there's four pieces, each, and it equals 40,000 pounds altogether, each piece is about 10,000 pounds, right? So two straps barely covers it. Barely covers the, the weight restriction. So he's good there. But, I mean, that uh, the feet of that equipment was sitting on aluminum on the trailer, like metal onto aluminum in wintertime. And they load it in wintertime. So there could be snow and ice underneath the feet of the farm equipment, making that thing very slippery. Like, all he's depending on for that load not to shift is friction between the farm equipment legs and the aluminum of the trailer, right? He's pressing it down with the straps, with two straps on each piece. If he has to hit the brakes really hard, or if he hits something, there's no way those straps are gonna stop that equipment from sliding forward on the aluminum, in my opinion. I'd love to know what your opinion would be. I, of course, I didn't film it. I, I'm not in the business of uh, humiliating anybody or saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. Because like I said, I'm learning too. And I don't wanna uh, say that, hey, you could do this better, because none of my business, right? It's your load. But when you're on the highway with me, I don't know, what, what would you guys do? Uh, you'll have to remember the loads that I pulled last week. If you didn't watch my vlogs from last week, you're gonna have to go back and check. Remember that oversized load? Imagine me pulling that whole load all the way to Alberta with only eight straps. That's it. What I did on mine, I did a little bit of overkill, I'll be honest, but I used uh, 10 chains and about 16 binders and 15 straps on the same load that he just used eight straps on. And he's pulling that thing, he said, like, across the country. Like, that thing's going down to, like, well, not across the country, but across the Midwest. He's going down to Missouri, I think, with it. And I'm just thinking, oh, my, man, oh, my. I wouldn't pull that load, but that's just me. What's your guys' opinion on this? When you see someone with freight, because I'm new to flatbed, and I'm learning different ways of you know, my own style of tying down loads. When you see someone whose load is clearly not sufficiently tied down, what do you do? Do you just leave him alone and be like, hey, that's his load, his problem? Or do you like go to him and say, hey, man, that's going to fly off and kill somebody? Like, I'm with the mindset, I want to go tell them, like, hey, I don't think that's safe. But I don't want to get in his business, you know? I'm so conflicted, but safety first, right? So I went and talked to him, and I told him, you know, I usually chain this thing down. And he admitted, yeah, he usually chains it down too, but he just, he felt like he didn't have the right hooks to chain it down. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, then why did you pull it out of the yard? If you know that you should have chains on this load, why are you pulling this down the interstate? Just my own, my own thoughts. So maybe that's a lesson that I can give to you. <laughs> Maybe that's a good lesson or a good mindset to have. If you pull into a truck stop 
and a driver comes up to you and says, hey, uh, do you think you got enough load securement on that? Can you confidently say, yes, I did everything I could to make sure this load will not come off this trailer on the highway? Can you be confident? Or are you going to be like that guy that I talked to and said, yeah, I know I should have chained it down, but I didn't have the right hooks. So I didn't think of any other way to tie it. So I just used two straps instead of chaining it down. And then I took it out on the interstate. What kind of answer is that? That's why I sort of wanted to talk to you guys about that. Because I was kind of a little upset about that. I'm like, so you're telling me that you know you should have done a better job. You know that this could fall off your trailer. You know that it's not safe to be on the highway. And you know that you should have done more. Yet here you are at the fuel pumps. And I saw him. He just went back out onto the interstate. So maybe this is a good good lesson for you guys uh, coming into flatbed. Like I, I don't want to be like a teacher or a educator to you because like I said, I'm new to this too. I'm learning too. But be confident in your load. If you think that it may not be safe, don't pull it onto public roads, please. For the sake of my life and for the sake of everyone else's lives on the road. But anyway, enough of that. I, that was just... I just wanted to bring that up with you guys, see what you guys thought. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Uh, it's a good conversation to have. People, uh, secure your loads. Be confident. And don't take it out until you are. Can I repeat that one more time? No, I won't. You guys get the message. So I'm here on my half hour break. I just fueled. We've actually been here for 35 minutes now. So uh, I'm going to get comfortable in here now. Take this jacket off. I don't like driving with my jacket on when I'm going down the highway for a few hours. I like to be comfortable. I'll see you down the road. Uh, I, I realize that the drop where we're bringing this lumber, it's right close to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So it'll give you a little bit of an idea of where I'm headed to. I'm probably gonna go to the Sioux Falls Flying J for night. Well, we made it last night all the way here to Laverne, Minnesota, where we're gonna be delivering this lumber in the morning. Just wanted to say thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. You hit the subscribe button, it helps me out a lot. And the little bell beside the subscribe button so you get a notification when I upload a new video. In the morning, right now for me, tomorrow for you, we gotta deliver this lumber. And then we gotta drive all the way over to Owatonna, Minnesota, which is a little two and a half, three hours away. And we've gotta load glass. We've gotta tarp it. So that should be interesting. I'm not too sure what to expect there, other than that it's gonna take a long time. So it's going to be a long day tomorrow. I hope you guys join me because I'm going to need some company. Hopefully everything goes smoothly and as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching.